Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of FS Economy with me and you heard 37. So I was looking around and uh, I saw a, one of our new people, Tucker, has flown a ton of jobs. And uh, one one plane he flew was our 172 Skyhawk. And he actually positioned over here to, K, well he had flown over here at KSJT. I've never really heard of this place, San An uh, Angelo. And look at this. Look how many freaking jobs there are at this place. Dag, oh, I'm glad I saw that. Glad he went there because look at that. And there's all kinds of places. Look at all those jobs. Good Lord. It's just one of those airports I had. I don't, you never really have heard of. I mean, it's not a major airport, but look at all the jobs. Like, heck yeah. And so we're actually going to fly back to that airport over here in my flight. It's over here right now at E13 in Crane, Texas. We're going to go about 96 miles over to that KSJT um, with the Mathis San Angelo, Texas. Man, there are so many jobs there. That's awesome. So hopefully we can get another plane in another episode and uh, fly some jobs out there because that's <laughs> a ton of jobs. All right, let's look at uh, Flight Sim Commander. Over here at E13, if we zoom out... You can see the wind is west, southwest, coming from the south. Uh, so he, over here, E13 Crane, we're going to take off on runway uh, 15. So that'll be a heading of 152 degrees. And it's 96 miles over here to San Angelo. And as you can see, the wind is coming basically from the northeast over here. And so we will land on runway 3, heading 037. So we'll come in here, get into the traffic pattern, and uh, yeah, land on runway, was it, 3. And airport elevation here is 1,916 feet, about 96 miles. Uh, we have about 57% fuel in our Skyhawk, 31 gallons, uh, so that'll be plenty of fuel uh, to get there. So we don't need to add anything or anything like that. Uh, it's three people, which is the most we can take. Uh, as you can see, 679 total pounds, and it pays 2500 It's not a big paying, but I mean, it's only three people going 96 miles. We haven't flown this plane in a while, so uh, I thought we'd jump in it. I kind of want to look here right here real quick. There's a caravan there you could rent. Man, that, ooh, that would pay a ton of, even though it's 627 an hour, I mean, look at all those jobs you could put in there. Because that holds, what, like eight people, 13 people, something like that? I think eight. There's no real huge ones. Well, there's a Phenom. Its home is at E13, which is where we are. How many people can that hold? Oh, it only holds nine. I thought it would hold more than that. But yeah, wow. Jeez, there's so many pla uh, planes there. And just the amount of jobs is crazy. So we'll probably have several episodes, hopefully, uh, here at uh, San Angelo. But with all that said, we can go ahead and jump on over into the plane. All right, everybody, here we are at the plane. You can hear the thunder. It's from lightning out in the distance, so... I don't know if there's a storm coming or leaving. It looks fine that way. It looks fine in most ways. Over that way, not so much. That gone. And by the way, we are overweight a little bit, so... There's always that. Let's go ahead and start this flight. Please add 22. Uh, we're really close, finally. Ignore that. We'll screen it. The storm is approaching. Or like I said, I guess it could be on its way out. All right, so let's get this thing started up. All right, so throttle. I'm going to open that up about a quarter of an inch or so. It's probably a little more, but oh well. Make sure I don't cut off. The prop area is clear. Gonna turn the master switch on, and let's find our beacon. Man, it's been a long time since I've flown this plane. Beacon coming on. It comes on the fuel pump. Actually, I'm gonna turn it off for one second. Oh no, it does come on first, and then we set this to full rich to help prime the engine. Fuel flow, I do believe, moved a little bit. Fuel pump coming off. And give it a little bit of fuel here. Let's go ahead and start this thing up. Advance the fuel. Man, I hope we didn't, um... 
If you remember back from Air Hauler 2, we usually did not prime this thing just for, that, for this exact reason. So let me go ahead and hit start with that cutoff. In case the engine is flooded, let's try this again. Ah, oh, jeez. Let me give her a little more fuel as well. Ah. Yeah, we're going to drain the battery is what's going to happen now. Alright, so that's cut off. Alright. Try her again. Oh, we haven't fouled the plugs. Oh, that's exactly what I was afraid of. Come on. I'm just really afraid that we're going to drain our battery here. Alright. Come on, girl. Make sure in throttle ain't getting it. Alright. That's the one cut off. Come on, girl. Try to unfoul the plugs. The, the plugs shouldn't be fouled. Should be alright by now. Oh, 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 oh. I thought we had it there for a second. I'm surprised uh, the battery hasn't died yet. It sounded like we were going to get her there for a second. I'm going to give her just a little more throttle. Sometimes that helps. Oh, it sounds like she wants to go so bad. Oh, there we go. If you do not succeed at first, try and try again. You can see the voltage in the... The investigator panel there. Go ahead and turn on my nav switch as well. Oil pressure is in the green. 39%. Let's give it a little more. I'll leave it right there about 60. Alright, so we need to actually check the electrical system. Master switch coming off. Alright, we'll go ahead and turn on strobe and actually that's not what well turn that on I guess um taxi what did I hit strobe that's what I'm looking for taxi and landing I'm not sure I hit the other ones all right engine rpm reduced to idle uh, master switch comes on you see the voltage warning coming on all right let's take this up to 1500 RPM as we come up it says the amateur in uh, the low voltage in the oscillator panel should come off but obviously the the thing is battery is probably drained so that's probably what's coming on because you can see the amateur uh, up so we're definitely charging so that's good so we can bring this back down and landing and taxi lights, you can go off. That voltage warning's off now as well. Alright. So, avionics master switch, you come on. Let's turn on all our electronics. Stand by there on the transponder. Switch over to GPS. Radios are on. Make sure the flaps are retracted. They are. They're up. I can see. All right. So let's go ahead. Get over to ATC here. Get on our radios. Uh, runway for takeoff. I believe it was 15. Let me check my notes here. It is, in fact, 15. So let's announce our taxi to it. November Niner Niner Zero Charlie Papa is taxiing to runway one five. And I'm gonna go ahead and set this to one five two. I believe we'll probably have to taxi down the runway, I'm guessing, that we're gonna take off on. It didn't look like there's any taxiways to me. Let's come back down here real quick though. Pedo heat. And taxi lights, you come on. There's our yoke. 
Parking brake coming off. We'll text out here to the left. Yeah, we haven't flown this in forever. And back when we were flying it, we flew it to death, man. Air hauler too. Flew it and flew it and flew it and flew it. It's like you'll never get out of this thing. Yeah, this was kind of a weird shaped airport too. With like three runways kind of convenient down here. It's kind of odd. I believe we're the furthest to the right. Trying to swing around here. Got my uh, already reset the the altitude, the altimeter. Sexy out here to the runways. Like I said, I think ours is clear to the right. Pretty sure it is. If you look at it, I get it. we're kind of in the right. Kind of looks like the runway, this first one to the left and right is like the better one, but we'll take this. We said uh, set to the 15. So I'm not sure if we should announce our takeoff or. Because we're kind of a little ways over um, from taking off. We got to get all the way down there. So I don't know if we want to announce that we're on the runway or not. I guess not. Landing and strobes though. The way anyone coming by would be able to see us. I do believe... Man, which one is it? If you look at... Look at the heading indicator... Out, come outside. See, 1533, that doesn't really help because there's two runways. That's got to be 30, I'm pretty sure. That's weird how it didn't change sound out here. It's kind of odd. Yeah, this is us. Hurry up and get down there so we can get out of here. Although I'm not too worried about the weather, but in real life I would be definitely worried about that weather. It's like right on the edge here. Really probably would not be flying in this kind of weather. See, E13, this is the home of that... Phenom, which is kind of weird, because isn't the Phenom, isn't that like a private jet? Pretty sure it is. Kind of a weird place for this to be a home of it. The runways aren't even all that long. They're not short necessarily, but not by long by any means. Let me adjust my mic just a little bit. Where is the switch for over here? Thought I hit it the first time. Alright, almost to the end of the runway. And we can get the heck out of here. It's crazy, like this weather over here looks so good, but then right behind you it's all that crappy weather. Well, I guess maybe that's Texas for you. So flat and everything. All right, we're pretty much at the end. We probably well, I'm not going to need the entire runway, but I'll go down here just in case. I can say we are a little overweight, so we'll go a little bit faster on takeoff as well. All right, so let's go ahead, turn around. Give a little more throttle because I gotta pump the brakes. There we go. All right, parking brake coming on. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this yoke for a minute. 
All right, so let's do our before takeoff checklist. Parking brake is set, flight controls, and the first thing we need is to bring the yoke back. Could use the co-pilot, we'll use ours. Flight controls look good. Rudder pedals look good. All right, flight instruments check and set. Our heading is set. I've already reset the altimeter. I'm gonna go ahead and set our autopilot up to about 6,500. Uh, set this to GPS. Get these messages off just in case. And resize a little bit. I like it more on the left. Well, I'll leave it over here on the right. ATC's on the left. Uh, let's go ahead and turn our transponder on. Alright, so fuel quantity. Check, we should be about 51%, and it looks like that's right. 16 and 15, 31 gallons, that's correct. Mixture, full rich. Fuel selector valve is in both. Alright, let's throttle up to about 1800 RPM. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this yoke so we can see better. Just about to the green line. That looks pretty close right about there. Let's go ahead and check our mags. They always fail. At least one of them. That one looks good. Wow, they actually passed. That's surprising. Vacuum gauge. Over here, just in the green. Ammoner. Looks like we are charging. No theater panel. There's nothing lit. Throttle. Check idle. All right, now a thousand or less. Strobe lights and landing lights are already on because we're on the runway. Pedo heat as well. Radios and avionics, everything is set. Let's go ahead and trim it for takeoff. It's pretty good right there. Flaps set for takeoff. You can use zero to ten degrees. So you can use none. I'll go ahead and let me just check it there. Ten. For some reason, you got to hit it twice when you first get in. I'm not sure why. All right, and let's go ahead and get on out of here. Tell everyone we're uh, heading. Where are we heading? We're heading to the east, I think. Out to the east. Almost forgot Echo where we were going. Traffic, Cessna, November, Niner, Niner, Zero, Charlie, Papa, taking off runway one five east departure. All right, everybody, cutting back in here. I, right as I was about to take off, I got a phone call I had to take, so I actually had ended up having to shut down FSX for a little bit because I knew I was going to be on the phone for a bit. Uh, so I went ahead and shut it down, and I've started back up. I think I have everything set back to where I wanted. All of our lights are on. Flaps are set back to 10. So it looks like everything should be good now. Now we should be, shouldn't have to get interrupted like that again. Parking brake is on. Just remember, uh, we are a little bit heavy, so I'm going to have to keep the ground speed up a bit before we take off. Alright. Mason to full power. I'm gonna push forward on the yokes so that nose doesn't come up. That was always a problem we had, I remember. This thing wanting to come up early. As heavy as we are, I don't definitely don't want that. Our speed's coming up. Alright, let's go ahead and let her come up gently. Luckily, we should get over those obstacles no problem whatsoever. Just over 80 knots. I'm not going to let go of the flaps just yet. Like I said, we're clear of all these obstacles, so we're pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and retract the flaps. Might be able to build up a little more airspeed now. Get rid of some of that drag. You see, we're just hovering like we're literally right around. Just over 80, or was it 60 knots actually, not 80. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn to the east. 
I almost want to say west just because the way we're lined up. We were lined up to the south. Here's Crane County, Texas, just in case you were ever wondering. I would take a look at it, but I'm a little, a little worried. Just keep that forward pressure down on the yoke. Obviously a small town. Not much going on in Crane. All right, so we're just over 70 knots now. I believe the climb speed is of 70 to 80 knots, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go ahead and trim down a little bit. Definitely needs it. Should I just bring that nose up? Man, it's taking a... Oh, that's right. I forgot the A to A, man. It trims really slow and you... It takes a little bit. So I'm going to keep at her. Yeah, she's trimming out better now. So let me look here. Yeah, airspeed 70 to 85 knots. Let's see, we're just still slightly under that. And we're only climbing at 500 feet a minute right now. It's not like it's the most powerful engine ever. The small plane. Autopilot coming on. And we are in GPS, so let me come down here. Arm it for that. Let's go ahead and switch this over to nav. Climb at 500 feet a minute. Now we're getting up towards 80 knots. Well, it's still a little slower than that, actually. Does it, will it even say? Yeah, 75 knots. All right, we uh, wanted to start leaning it out around 3,000. As you can see, we're about 4,000, so... Let's go ahead and lean her out. That'll help with the power as well. You can hear the engine pick up a little bit. Lean it out to 80. And then uh, once we get up, I set the cruise for about 6,500 feet, as you can see. Uh, once we get up there, it says power 2,000 to 2,400 RPM, no more than 80%. Have such a short flight, I'm not even really worried about fuel consumption, to be quite honest. It's about 0 081, so you can see we've got some uh, weather, a little bit of wind, which isn't surprising at all. So I guess the wind is actually coming from our left, though, from the north. It should be coming from the south. Actually, they're kind of lined up now. I just didn't want to take that away. Reset my view. So this is about an hour and 21 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and decrease our rate of climb. You can see we're all, all the way down to 65 knots, 64 knots. She's struggling a little bit. Put that down to 70. We've only got, what, 1,700 feet to go. Uh, I get worried sometimes, man. You're a little bit overloaded. In some planes, maybe it wouldn't matter so much. But uh, in this little thing, you overload it much, you got some problems. It's not a stout engine. Although, obviously, you're not supposed to overload any plane. But especially one with this kind of power. There's good old Texas, man. Deserty. I saw uh, on the map, we're not too far away from Midlands, which we have a base there, an air hauler. And we're in West Texas, uh, oil drilling area. 
There used to be a show called Black Gold on True TV about that. I love that. Right, hour and 14 minutes now, just 89 miles away. Climbing better now, we're about 70 knots. Yeah, right there is 70 knots. 5,300 feet. Did not that down to 64. You can hear the engine pick up a little bit when you do that. So that's at 2200 RPM and on the cruise when we get to that 2000 to 2400. 1000 feet to go on our climb. Well, quite honestly, there is not a whole lot to see. Kind of deserty area, so set my heading there. All right, so thousand feet to go. We've got a little over an hour to go. Once we uh, level out, it'll pick up. Obviously, pick up some speed. So with that, I guess we can go ahead and speed her on up, and I'll be back in just a minute.
All right, everybody, slowing her down to normal speed. It says seven miles out, but uh, as you can see, we're out from a little bit. Uh, we're gonna make a right turn here in just a minute uh, to get into the traffic pattern. Airport's over there, and you can see they approach there. That is our runway. And we're coming up on 3,000 feet, going down to 2,900. That'll be 1,000 AGL. Let's go ahead. Oh, that's not what I wanted. All right, I mean, they're going to have a tower, aren't they? Ah, they do have a tower, so we won't be talking to anybody. We're just going to get in the traffic pattern. There are two runways there. So it'll be a little different, because usually when I do the track pattern, I'm used to going to even smaller airports. I don't want to watch out for that. We are, like I said, just at a thousand feet. So make sure we miss that a little more. Not sure. I guess we are above it. Not by very much. If you don't want to clip that or anything. It's kind of cool you've never actually uh, flown all that close to a tower like that. Clay tile roofs for some reason. Alright, so when we try to make our 45, it'll be on a heading of about 172. Uh, then we'll head on to 217 degrees to follow uh, the runway parallel. Uh, make our right turn to 127 and then another right turn to 037. Which is the heading of the runway. The runway that we're going to land on, I should say. Alright, so let's see if I... If I'm so bad at judging, judging these things. 172. Like I say, it's harder for me to tell, especially when there's going to be two runways. All you can do is keep on doing it until you get better, though. That's how you got to learn, obviously. So, I believe that's our runway? Yeah, see, now we should have gone out further. Like I said, I knew I was going to screw that up. Let's come back out. Or is that our runway? Going back to 172. I'm not sure if I have butchered it or not. See, that's what I'm talking about. That, I think... Well, is that our runway or not? See, 172 should be a 45, so that, that is going to be our runway. Should I just come out a little bit further? I don't know if you should be... You know... If you can come over that, I don't know. Since it's not the active. Yeah, I wanted to be over here more. Like I say, I always, I just, I'm not really good with the uh, turning like that. Getting straight onto it. But I'm going to go ahead and turn over to 217. But doing this more and more and more uh, should get better with that. And that'll put us, like I said, parallel here with our runway. We can go ahead and start pulling back on the power now. Not too much. <laughs> Alright, that's at 100%. And there really isn't too much to go over. So we're a thousand above, speed is coming down. Little by little. Could really uh, go ahead and go. We don't really have to call base. One, two, seven, or sorry, zero, three, seven. Take that off. See if I can hurry up and do this. There we go. 037 is our runway heading. Flaps to 1. Let those extend. 
before we actually enter the turn. Uh, got to hit the autopilot. I turned off the heading. Didn't turn off the autopilot. Alright, just pitch it down a little bit. See, it would just be so nice to be able to, in real life, you know, you can just turn your head and keep looking at the airport, but this, you know, it's just kind of blind. We're probably turning a little too sharp because we were a fair distance away from the runway. Yeah. Well, not too bad. Really could have turned to it a little bit sooner. I'll level out here for a second. We need to watch our speed with our flaps out. And our need to get uh, more flaps out. Alright. Flaps going to 20. Says we are high. I'm trimming it a lot too, trying to help that get us down and control our airspeed with it. Recording. Now get off the power a little bit more. Help us get down. Although we're sitting a little quick there. All right, full flaps. So I just feel like we're going to uh, descend a little too quick doing that. See if we cannot screw this landing up. This does feel like we're getting a little slow. Well, not too bad. Off the power. Not too bad, I don't think. No brakes needed. I'm going to go ahead and retract the flaps. Seems like a pretty decent landing. Especially not having flown this in a while, but you should be able to land at 172, no problem, as much as we've flown. Although like, it is kind of difficult in some respects because, like I say, we switched from plane to plane to plane. But I've been flying uh, right now the Duke. V60 from Real Air and Air Hauler 2 and uh, well I've landed twice in Air Hauler 2 with it and both times we've crashed although I'm not sure if it's me yet or not because I've only done it twice and without Air Hauler 2 I've landed it fine and uh, the crash is like the second time uh, we crashed and it said that the gear wasn't down even though it was but I it's kind of weird strobe and landing lights are coming off I can go ahead and stop that recording after landing, all we have is flaps up, so that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and shut off the pedo heat. We don't need that. All right, we'll just taxi on over to those buildings. Next, we can go ahead and lean it out a little bit. I'll put it at 70%, and let's get off this power real quick. I'm going to keep going a little too quick there. Some movement going around, fire truck. I saw one plane parked over there. That commercial was turned down, way down, so that's why there's only like one commercial airplane over there. Although it looked like it was blue one, so I thought it kind of looked like a default one maybe, but it shouldn't be. Because I do believe World of AI kicks all those out.
Not too bad a flight, though. It's kind of fun sometimes to get in a plane like this. Small little 172. So the bigger planes. Well, we don't, I haven't been in a real like commercial airliner in a long time. I kind of enjoy it a little bit, but it'll be fun to get back into them as well. I think the biggest I've flown in a while is uh, the freaking Twin Otter. And like FS Economy, actually, and FS Passengers as well. Looks like we're clear both ways. I know I saw a plane over here. Well, there's one. Maybe it wasn't blue. I guess it was white. It's probably the FedEx over there. That's what it kind of looked like from here. Maybe a caravan or something. Yeah, but it's just crazy seeing how many jobs there were here. Like, wow. It's cool because... Uh, uh, it's just an airport I would have never even... I've never even heard of it, and I probably would have never checked it out. I've not seen Tucker had flown... Uh, I can't remember if it was to there or from there. So I just happened to check it out and was like, Dad, God. Love to have an FBO or something here. Obviously, there's obviously going to be nothing available. Most places are pretty much already taken up. All right, let's go ahead and stop her right here. Parking brake coming on. We'll let FS Economy go ahead and grab her. I wonder if it'll uh, talk about the fuel since it was one of these where uh, I lean it out so much. Luckily, it won't kick it out. The parking brake is set. Let's go ahead and turn off all of our electrical equipment. Could have turned off the transponder already. Go ahead and switch all this off. Switch you off as well. Why can't I click it? There, it's such a small button. Go ahead and turn off the net or taxi since we're not taxiing. I'm gonna go ahead and switch off the nav as well. Uh, Avionics master switch can come off. Cut it. Idle. Ignition comes off. Master switch comes off. Beacon, you're off. And let's see, just turn to left or right. All right, let's go over to FS Economy and get ourselves paid. All right, everybody. Here we are. Flight took an hour and 10 minutes. Never really noticed that being up there before. Uh, income, $2,514. Had the plane for an hour and 10 minutes. I guess that's the same. Uh, so it was $116.97, although we own the plane, so nothing really. Uh, fuel, $20.72. Paid $251.40 for the ground crew fee. Uh, those fees cost a total of $272.12. Distance bonus, we got $32.67 against to us, though. But where does that come from, I wonder? From us, I, I guess, us to us. Uh, so earnings this flight, $2,157.57. 4.9857 to me and or no to YT Flyers and 16.59 to me. However, as always, doesn't really matter because I am everything that I own is you all as well to the group. 11.659 uh, plus 12,261.00. Uh, four hundred one dollars plus forty nine thousand four hundred thirty seven brings the total to one hundred seventy six thousand. So we're over halfway. I think what do we want? Three twenty something like that. Um, by the way, anytime if you want to leave a comment uh, down below in the video saying what plane you would like us to get next, because I have certain planes, but obviously I want you all to be able to fly too and. You may not have, you know, what, uh, I keep wanting to say Skylane for some reason. The, the 337, Cessna 337, you all may not have that, so if 
hardly anybody has that. You can get freeware, by the way. Freeware is just as good uh, for flying Epis economy. I don't want to get any plane that, you know, you guys don't have. We could get like a Baron if you all have that. Well, the Baron's default, so everyone would have that. So that's a good plane, to, kind of a plane to get. And with five passengers, it'd make a little more money. Although, why can't I think of the 337? I keep wanting to say Skyline, so it's the 182. Um, but yeah. So, well, I we're over halfway, though, so everything looks good. Why can't I think of that plane name? I don't know why. Aircraft, purchase aircraft, it'll tell me right here. Model, Cessna 337. Skymaster, Skymaster. But yeah, tell me what plane you all would like to see. And with that, that's going to be the end of this episode. I hope you all did enjoy it. I'll catch you guys on the next flight.